Hey, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and today I'm very excited to talk about Mixer 2019, the largest ever update for Quixel Mixer. This update is packed full of powerful new features, including procedural masking to give artists even more flexibility to create materials with incredibly easy to use tools. Combined with the ever-growing Megascans library, Mixer's tools will allow you to pump out high quality content faster than ever. And to top it off, Mixer will be free during the beta period, which will last about a year from now. So let's hop on over to Quixel.com and get started. All right, over on Quixel.com, we'll go to the Mixer tab and then click Download Mixer. Once the download's complete, double click on the executable for a quick install. And then click Launch. If this is your first time running a copy of Mixer, you'll be asked to confirm a few directories. The top one is where your Mixer files will be stored, such as projects, mixes, brushes, and so on. Local library is where Mixer will look for your Megascans assets. Make sure those look right, then click OK. When you go to create a new mix, you'll choose the mix name, the working resolution, and PBR workflow. The file drop-down menu is pretty standard with New, Open, and Save. You can also do a quick export of your texture maps, as well as export your mix to the Megascans library. Under Edit, you have access to some preferences you can adjust as you see fit. Library gives you several import options, download all acquired assets, but be careful because that might take a while, and refresh library, which is useful should Megascans Bridge and Mixer somehow get out of sync. There are a few useful things under help, including a view of the keyboard shortcuts and an option to check for updates. And lastly is an experimental dropdown, which has, as you probably guessed, experimental features from time to time. This is your layer stack, which you'll use to author your materials. The settings tab lets you adjust the working resolution and PBR workflow. In display, you can select gradient, flat, or skybox viewport background, among a few other settings, such as the level of tessellation. The performance tab will allow you to tweak some settings so that if you're on a lower end PC, you can still have a smooth experience. And lastly, there's the export tab for your texture outputs, which I'll get to a little bit later. One of the key features that makes Mixer such a powerful tool is the seamless integration of scanned data from the Megascans library, and you can browse through that vast library of assets right inside Mixer by clicking the Online tab. After signing in to your Megascans account, you'll be able to browse through all of the scanned surfaces in the library to download for your mix. Make sure the download settings fit your needs, and then click Download. The scan is now available in your local library and ready to add to your mix. With the surface loaded, I wanted to show you a few handy options just above the viewport. You can toggle displacement on and off with this icon here, or by pressing D. You can tile your mix by pressing the button to the right of that, or by pressing T. And you can toggle the grid with the button next to that, or by pressing G. By default, the viewport renders with PBR lighting, but you can change the rendering to diffuse, normal, gloss, etc. by using the drop down on the far left. You can also press 0 through 9 on the keyboard to change the modes. This button here will put the camera in orthographic mode, which can be especially useful for when you're painting masks. And then next to that, you can change between the different HDR light options for the viewport. Using the height data of scanned surfaces is a powerful way to create some believable PBR textures in a very short amount of time. But let's take a look at the newest feature in Mixer 2019 to see how Megascans and procedural masking work hand in hand to rapidly create something truly unique. For this tutorial, I'll only be using free assets from the Megascans library so that you can follow along. I always like to start off with the base solid layer. Then I'll add the industrial concrete floor. These will be stepping stones, so I'll bump up the threshold and pull down the radius. I then lower the low frequency to zero before punching in a hex value for my diffuse color. I also give it a little more gloss and then up the repetitions to three. Okay, now for the power of procedural masks. I start off by adding a square pattern to the mask stack. I lower the spacing to have less of a gap between the tiles. 
I adjust the offset to stagger the rows and then use the vertical setting. The jitter intensity offers some height variation between each tile. And if I adjust the threshold, I can even have some of the tiles removed altogether. Adjusting the seed will randomize the jitter to give you different results. After adjusting the bevel and bevel curve, I give the pattern a name and I'm ready for the next mask. I add a whirly 2 noise for some large irregularities in the surface of the tiles. I drop the amplitude and frequency down to keep the effect a little more subtle. I also adjust the octaves, lacunarity, and persistence to give some more textural detail. And then I multiply the mask and drop the opacity. Adding a brightness and contrast modifier using a multiply blend and a lowered opacity, I crank up both settings which has a nice effect on the layers beneath. Layer linking a Gaussian blur by alt clicking the modifier, I'm able to soften the appearance of the brightness contrast modifier to mimic some erosion. And then I drop in a Perlin noise. I max out the amplitude and adjust the other settings to give me a nice gritty look. After setting the blend layer to multiply, I drop the opacity way down until I'm happy with the appearance. Alright, this is looking pretty good, so I'll add another solid layer for some edge details. Blending from above, I drop the threshold down and set the wrap to base about halfway. I enter a hex value for the diffuse color and then bump up the gloss a little bit. Adding a mask stack to the layer, I add the curvature component first. I set both the sample range and frequency balance to 1 before bringing the level values close together in the middle and inverting the component. I add a gradient remap modifier and give both values a 0 and then repeat it 4 times. Right clicking on the curvature component below, I can copy and paste a new component above the gradient remap. I uncheck Invert and Layer Blend to Multiply before adjusting the levels to give me the results I'm looking for. I then layer link a Gaussian Blur to the pasted curvature component with an overlay blend to soften the effect. Alright, now it's time to add some of that jungle floor look, and for this I'll use the Forest Roots Scan. As always, I play with the blend and material settings until I'm happy with how everything looks. This is a great example of how a Megascan surface can work harmoniously with the new procedural mask stack to transform the look and feel of your material. Okay, so the roots are good to go, now it's time to add some moss. As before, I play with the settings, but this time I utilize wrap to base and remove base details so that the underlying detail doesn't come through the thick moss layer. After lightening the diffuse color, I'm ready to do some more masking. Using the Position Gradient component, I set the tilt to 0 degrees and pull the ranges in. I then add a Curvature component and set it to Multiply. After adjusting the different settings inside the component, I invert it so that the moss is mostly removed from the roots. And then lastly, I throw on another Position Gradient with 0 degree tilt, inverted, and set to Add. After playing with the range to reduce the effect, I lower the opacity to have even more control of the mask's influence. Alright, that just about does it. In just a few minutes I was able to create a Jungle Ruins floor material using Megascan's assets and procedural masks. And since the procedural masks are non-destructive, it's easy to adjust your value to change the look and feel of your material very quickly. All that's left to do now is export. You can export with the standard settings, or you can customize the name, export location, file type, and even channel pack your textures however you wish. Then just hit export. With the addition of the procedural mask stack, Mixer 2019 is by far the biggest update for the tool yet, but it's only just the beginning. Be sure to grab the latest beta of Quixel Mixer from Quixel.com and give it a spin. We really look forward to seeing the amazing mixes you produce.